mushroom clouds snake skyward, hurling the atom's deadly radiation high into the heavens. Oxygen is magnetic. Oh, wait a minute, now there's oxygen inside us. How come when you walk by a magnet, you don't suddenly uh, go like that? Well, I'm going to show you why. So let's... Uh, I have some neat stuff here which I made this morning in my lab. This camera has all kinds of burn marks and cracks on it, and they're all due to me, but we're about to, uh, well, we're about to do it again, in fact. So this is a uh, nice big magnet. Zoom in here, try and get some light on the side. On the subject, I think that's relatively clear. We got some shadows here, but maybe if I turn it, there we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. So heat big magnet. If you put a piece, it took me half an hour to get the bar that was stuck in here this morning out of there. Um, let's try some liquid nitrogen. Now, the reason that I brought liquid nitrogen is obviously there's lots of nitrogen in here now because the air is 80% nitrogen, but you can't see what's going on. So let's condense the nitrogen. And when you condense nitrogen, you get liquid nitrogen. It looks like water. But it's at its boiling point. It's at minus 192 degrees C. Okay, it's cold stuff. You've got to chill down the air to minus 192 before this stuff uh, condenses into a liquid. You don't have to worry about it. You're already breathing. Uh, <laughs> I have to finish that sentence. You're already breathing nitrogen. <laughs> you will continue to breathe. Now, if, if we go back and look at the Let's do that MO diagram of nitrogen. Uh, where do we have an NO diagram of nitrogen? Uh, it's going to be way back there. There's nitrogen. No unpaired electrons. So I would predict that this stuff is not paramagnetic. Let's see if it's true. It should not stick to the poles of a magnet. And I'll simply pour this into the magnet. Chill you when it goes down your pants, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's okay though, don't worry. Nothing happens. It doesn't stick to a magnet. There's no unpaired electrons in it. That cracking sound is the camera, but I'm not going to worry about that. <laughs> now we have liquid oxygen. So, I, whoops, I made this by, I made this by putting a copper tube inside a, a flask and filling up the flask with liquid nitrogen and then blowing oxygen through the tube. Oxygen's got a higher um, uh, boiling point than nitrogen. So you can distill, you can condense gas phase oxygen into liquid oxygen by pushing it through liquid nitrogen. And I'll just put some in a beaker here so you can see it. It's got a lovely blue color. I'm hoping you can see that color. OK. It's blue because of the electronic transitions that are going on in here. It's actually a very complex process, but it's one photon exciting two electrons at the same time. And the absorption of radiation is in the uh, red and yellow and green portions of the spectrum, and that leaves the blue for you to see. It's absorbing everything else. So it's liquid oxygen. It's the same stuff you're breathing. I mean, it's not going to hurt me to do this or anything. It's you know, perfectly normal. But let's pour this through the magnet and see what happens. Isn't that just the coolest demo in the world? I love this demo. It sticks to a magnet. It, oxygen is magnetic. It's paramagnetic. It's not your everyday experience. Why would you think it would be? Well, you only see this, of course, because the oxygen is so dense here. It's about 4,000 times as dense as the oxygen in the atmosphere. Let's do that again. Eh? As, as, as in the atmosphere. So you can only see it when it's a liquid, but it actually sticks in the poles of a magnet. This stuff is so much fun. I actually meant to bring something else, because there's lots of things you can do with liquid oxygen. <laughs> but I forgot to bring something. So unless anybody has some steel wool in their pocket. Some people are actually checking. <laughs> you carry steel wool often? No? OK. OK. But I'll do that uh, when we get to kinetics. There's a good reason for doing that, too. So oxygen is paramagnetic. Why is it paramagnetic? Well, let's go and look at our MO diagram for it. Oops, there we are there. 
It's for the simple reason that it's got two unpaired electrons. Now they happen to be, there we go, they happen to be in an antibonding orbital. It doesn't matter. They're still unpaired. 